look, it's hard to not to love this place, isn't it? Yeah. When you look out here, what, what's the feeling that Monte Carlo gives you? A uh, feeling of home environment. You know, both of my children are born here, and uh, I've been calling this place uh, my uh, residential home for you know almost 50, no, more than 15 years. So it's uh, it's amazing to be. Uh, you know, back here playing in a tournament uh, that is that is played in a, in a club with that um, where I spent countless hours of training. You know, I know the grounds people, I know everybody in you know in the management of the club. So it's it's really nice to see. I mean, the club is in obviously completely different environment during the tournament. Um, yeah, it's 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 always very exciting. I, I guess uh, it also adds a little bit more pressure of, of uh, succeeding, you know, and doing well in a home environment in front of people that uh, they are close to. I'm sure you would agree that clay is the most demanding surface at this stage of your career. How long does it take you to get going on this surface? Well, I'm, I guess I'm one of the, those players that probably requires a little bit more matches and more time and more weeks to really peak on this surface. Uh, maybe early on in my career that wasn't the case, but now in the last maybe six, seven years, it, you know, it, it, it takes me, it takes me, I don't know, two, three, four weeks to really, yeah, reach, reach the desired level. So, you know, I'm hoping every year that Monte Carlo can be already the great uh, success uh, on, on clay um, and, and I can play the best tennis on clay here. But... You know that wasn't wasn't the case, so I have to, I guess, I lower my expectations a little bit and try to really focus on building the game and uh, doing the right things on the practice court and uh, in the gym, and then you know hope for the game to come as soon as possible. And I'm sure you're looking ahead to Roland Garros already, but also the Olympics that are yeah. going to be played on the same yeah. surface at the same place. How important would it be to win a trophy before then? Well, I mean, of course, I mean, the, the biggest trophy before Olympic Games that I would love to win on this surface is Roland Garros. I mean, that's the tournament uh, that uh, matters the most on this surface. It's one of the four slams and, and you know, I'm going there as a defending champion. Obviously, I haven't won Roland Garros uh, as many times as I've won the other slams. So you know, it's always it has been the toughest one for me to win. But, you know, that's again the goal this year is to really peak in, in Paris. And, uh, and I think having Paris before Olympic Games uh, is, is good because you're going to have plenty of weeks and uh, a clay court time. And then hopefully when the Olympics arrive, I can actually, yeah, basically play, play the best tennis I possibly can. Mm -hmm. We've had a bit of a, a change in the rankings right behind you. Yannick Sinner's edging closer to you. How have you followed his development over the last months in particular? Well, I mean, he's been uh, playing some amazing tennis and he's been the best player in the world this year so far, no doubt. Uh, he's been, you know, yeah, probably playing the tennis of his life. I mean, one, he lost only one match uh, in the entire year. He won three or four tournaments. Uh, so just the, the level has been incredible to, to, to witness, to watch. And... Uh, you know, he's a great guy, he's really devoted, uh, he's got a really good team of people around him and it doesn't come as a surprise really, because I, I know how much work he puts in uh, day in, day out. And, you know, he was always uh, very talented and playing uh, powerful tennis, but I think now he does it with more margin, he doesn't make as many mistakes and his serve <coughs> motion has changed, which is, you know, uh, very... Uh, big decision, you know, to make from him and his coaching stuff, but uh, it, it paid off because he's, he became a huge weapon of his. And uh, yeah, it's 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 great to see him doing well, and also his rivalry with with Alcaraz developing. I think it's uh, it's it's really nice. It's good for sport that we have more rivalries that uh, can um, yeah really uh, I guess interest uh, bring more attention. You know, to our sport from from young Gondians and people around the world that follow follow tennis. Yeah, we, we all heard the news about your coaching situation. Are you in a hurry to hire a new permanent coach, or do you think you'll go for a while without? Not at all. I'm not in a hurry at all. Uh, I've uh, had a friendly relationship with Nenad Zimanić for many years. I've known him since I was a kid, and he's always helped me out as a mentor, as a older brother, really, as somebody that uh, has been through a lot of 
things that I'm going through, that I was going through. So uh, that friendly relationship that, that we have is, uh, is the reason why we are here today, you know, together. And uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes, you know, this, this uh, several weeks that we've been together has been really enjoyable for me on the court. And, um, you know, uh, we don't have any commitments yet, so let's see how it all progresses. Right.